Okay, into the final topic for stage two chemistry, which is managing resources. Um, this is a reasonably long topic, so it's probably similar in length to the first topic. And the first subtopic is energy, and that's also a reasonably long subtopic, much longer than the subtopics that we've just completed in the organic part of the course. Um, we're gonna divide this, I think, into three parts. And in the first part of the energy subtop subtopic, we are gonna look at fossil fuels and biofuels. Let's get into it. Okay, um, the first part of this topic goes to um, two processes I think you would know very, very well. So this is about photosynthesis and respiration. Let's look at the dot points, that's the most important. Describe and write the equation for photosynthesis. Describe and write the equation for aerobic respiration of glucose. So hopefully you've all learnt somewhere in your science education, do either in middle school science or you've done a bit of biology or we probably touched on it last year as well photosynthesis photosynthesis is what happens in the leaves of plants they take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water that they get from the roots of the plant and we get an input of energy in the form of light from sunlight and that converts that into glucose and oxygen this releases oxygen back into the atmosphere using up carbon dioxide to stop carbon dioxide building up and up in our atmosphere very important in terms of global warming glucose is the the fuel of life and so that glucose gets used well in ourselves in the mitochondria of our cells um, we have a process called respiration where that glucose reacts with oxygen that's carried from our lungs via hemoglobin through our arteries um, and that glucose and oxygen react to form carbon dioxide and water and they release energy and then that energy is what in our bodies um, produces um, ATP from ADP and phosphate if you do biology if you don't do biology don't worry about that bit um, and you can see those two reactions are just the forward and reverse of each other that is well, this reaction here is just this reaction here backwards so you need to know those equations um, if you don't think you can write them out off by heart already, um, do it three times every day until you get to a point where you can do it and then you're likely to never forget it. So that's photosynthesis and respiration. Let's keep moving. So into the next bit. Sometimes this next bit feels to me more like an environmental science course than a chemistry course, but it is in the subject um, for chemistry, so we must do it. And it is important information. Um, basically we need to know what fossil fuels are and we need to know about um, biofuels and we need to be able to have an understanding of what a renewable um, resource is versus a non-renewable non resource. Um, I won't go through all the detail here on the left but the main parts we need to be able to discuss the advantage and disadvantages of carbon-based fuels as a source of heat compared with their use of as their use as feedstock. I'll talk about that in a sec. And we need to be able to identify, identify bioethanol, biodiesel, sunlight, and wind as renewable energy sources and compare the contributions of fossil fuels to global warming with those from renewable energy sources. So what do we mean here? Fossil fuels are formed from the anaerobic decay of organic matter over millions of years. If you've forgotten, anaerobic means no oxygen, we talk about anaerobic respiration versus aerobic respiration possibly, um, but anaerobic is with no oxygen, so when things are generally buried under the ground or buried under the sea where there's not a large supply of oxygen. Organic matter is basically just living matter from plants and animals, so um, coal and oil, and well, coal and crude oil and all that form from dead plants and animals that basically get buried where there's no oxygen. Fossil fuels are not renewable. They can't be naturally replenished over short times of years to decades. So it takes millions of years to convert the dead organic matter into a fossil fuel. At the rate that we are using, there's no chance to replenish them, so we would not regard them as renewable. They are used to provide energy. They're particularly in terms of transport for cars and buses and trucks and motorbikes and obviously electricity generation 
Um, we're trying to use less for electricity. We're trying to move away from things like um, coal-fired power stations. And, um, but we still do use coal and we also use some gas-fired gas -fired power stations as well. And um, we'll talk later on about why they make good fuels, but, you know, they are a, a good source of fuel. But there's one problem with using up all of our fossil fuels as fuel and burning them where they basically no longer exist and that is we also use fossil fuels as the feedstock for the chemical industry so they are the starting material for lots of chemicals and lots of plastics those of you who did stage one with me might have looked at this in your she task as we did the organic topic last year um, but um, even if you didn't do that, lots of what you look around you, particularly that is either plastics or things like paints and even sh detergents are all use um, crude oil or fossil fuels as their starting material. If we use them all up as a use up or if we use them all up um, by burning them, then they won't be available to make those other important products that we need. Biofuels are derived from plants or animal waste. Um, some examples, barley can be used to make ethanol. Um, basically, you know, it's almost a variation on making beer. Canola um, is high in vegetable oil, which is a triglyceride. We've looked at triglycerides now. And we're going to learn, um, I think, in the next slide, if not the slide after, actually it might be two slides time, how we turn a triglyceride into biodiesel. Um, manure from things like pigs um, can also be used to produce methane um, as that decomposes it releases methane gas which can be captured and added to natural gas um, which um, can be used for you know cooking and even transport in some cases and other things but or in power stations as well um, Biofuels are renewable. That means they can be replenished in a short time. We can grow more barley, turn it into ethanol. Yep, we get CO2 emissions from the ethanol, but that when we grow the barley again, that CO2 gets absorbed again. Canola, we can grow more canola, make more triglycerides. Again, the CO2 that is released in burning the triglyceride will be absorbed when we grow the next lot of canola. Um, Pig manure, which gets turned into methane, well, the pigs are eating a lot of plants. So when those basically, they release the CO2, but when the plants grow, um, we, can, we can renew, replenish that supply. So that's what makes that renewable. So I think we've covered most of that, but we are going to go into a little bit more detail on a couple of those things in the next slide. So let's keep going and, um, you know, keep keep looking at some of these comparisons okay I just realized this what is on this slide here is exactly the same as what was on the previous slide but I've just split it over two slides so we are still covering the stuff that I just mentioned in the previous slide and we want to particularly here look at the advantages and the disadvantages of fossil fuels and of biofuels so the advantages of fossil fuels is there is relatively large reserves yes we've used up a lot of our reserves but you know, generally, you know, it's hard to estimate exactly because I don't know how much fossil fuel is out there. But, you know, we, I think most, it's mostly accepted that we're probably not even halfway through our fossil fuel reserves. They are very cheap um, compared to a lot of other types of um, fuel. Um, digging up crude oil and turning it into petrol to run your car is a fairly cheap process. And we also have this massive infrastructure. We have the capacity to dig oil wells and to mine for coal and we have the capacity to um, burn the coal to make electricity and we have um, oil refineries that can turn the crude oil into petrol and we have petrol stations on just about every, not every corner but you know what I mean, we have lots of petrol stations to to, to hand out, you know, to deliver out that those reserves to, to consumers. So, you know, there's a lot of advantages in fossil fuels. But the disadvantage is, is they're not available as feedstock if all used as fuel. I talked about that on the previous slide. They're not renewable. I talked about that on the previous slide. And they contribute to global warming, which we've talked about previously, um, both earlier in the year and a little bit on the previous um, couple of slides. So, compared to biofuels, biofuels are renewable. That's a big advantage. 
there's no net contribution to CO2 emissions. The CO2 absorbed in growth equals the CO2 emitted in combustion. I talked about that on the previous slide. I've got here limited infrastructure. I'm wondering if I have put that in the wrong spot. I think I have put that in the wrong spot. One of the disadvantages of biofuels is limited infrastructure. I'm not sure why I did that. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, however, some of the other disadvantages of biofuels is if you are growing, if you're growing basically barley or canola to make um, biofuels, then there's less land available for food production if used for fuel production. So, yeah. If you, you haven't got the land available to grow food if you're using it to grow fuel. You also do get higher emissions of the oxides of nitrogen contributing to smog generally from the biofuels than you do from the fossil fuels. A lot of the biofuels, like lots of plants, are reasonably rich in nitrogen. Um, that nitrogen gets turned into nitric oxide emissions, which then can lead to smog and also acid rain and lots of other problems as well. So, and as I said before, we don't have as much infrastructure in place to um, produce and handle um, biofuels, biofuels as well, as compared to what we do for fossil fuels. So I think that completes the comparison. Um, let's look at what's next. So what's next is how do we make fossil fuels? And in particular, how do we make bioethanol and how do we make biodiesel? Let's start with bioethanol. It's produced by fermentation. So it's basically the same as the brewing process. You take things that are high in glucose, um, barley um, grains are high in, in glucose, like high in carbohydrates that break down to glucose, at least through the hydrolysis reaction, link a bit of organic chemistry. Enzymes, generally yeast is what we would add, and that will break down the glucose to produce ethanol, which is what we know as alcohol, and carbon dioxide. The, the problem with fermentation alone, though, is fermentation can only produce a 10 to 12% ethanol concentration so up to about the concentration of wine what happens after that point is the ethanol becomes so toxic to the enzymes that the enzymes stop working so what we then need to do is do a distillation remember we did a distillation when we did the ester prac where we separate the mixture by boiling point so ethanol has a lower boiling point than water so when you boil them with a condenser and all the other right bits the ethanol will boil first you separate off, off that ethanol that boils first um, to, to concentrate the ethanol. That's the process that you would use to make spirits. So when you make vodka or whiskey or scotch or any of those sort of things, that's the process that we use. Same thing to make the concentrated ethanol out of the, um, the, the fermented product, which is only 10 to 12%. Um, Biodiesel, well, this ties in to what we did and what we just looked at with triglycerides in the previous organic and biological chemistry topic. We take a triglyceride here, should recognise that structure now. Now, previously we talked about taking a triglyceride and doing the hydrolysis, which would break that into the glycerol, the propen 1, 2, 3 triol, and you can imagine here we would get what we call the three fatty acids. So we would get those three carboxylic acids formed after it broke here. But if we add some methanol into that process, what happens is the methanol becomes an alcohol. It reacts with these carboxylate ions and it forms the methyl esters. So we have a methyl and then we have the, um, the, the, the bit that's derived from the carboxylic acid, <coughs> pardon me, at that end. 
So what we will form is these methyl esters. And methyl esters are what we use as biodiesel. So when we put, say, biodiesel into a car or a tractor, we are putting in the methyl esters. Um, they have very similar properties to normal diesel, um, similar energy outputs, um, similar viscosity, density, all that sort of thing. So they can be used as a substitute with diesel. There is a few little additives that you need to add, but yeah, they can be used as a substitute. So what you've got to recognise here is this is, I think it says here, it's hidden in my bar at the bottom, but it's a variation of the hydrolysis of triglycerides that's happening here. So you've almost got two reactions happening at once. Think of the triglyceride breaking to form the carboxylate ions and the glycerol. Then the methanol, which is why I've done this in a different colour, reacting with those carboxylate ions to form esters, which is the form that we need them in to be biodiesel. If you're not sure about some of that, maybe review the triglycerides episode and how triglycerides form and some of the reactions of triglycerides. So I think that wraps up this flipped lesson for the uh, fossil fuels and biofuels. Cheers.